Hey guys, welcome back. So, all right, now we're gonna deal with non-homogeneous linear systems, which basically means that uh, we have some function g of t that's attached to our previously homogeneous linear system. And so, in order to illustrate to you uh, the method in which you find general solutions to these kind of problems, I'm gonna take the same approach that I did in the last video of showing you that dvq is just one story. Okay, it's, it's really just uh, the way that this course is building up. It's just we're applying ourselves now to just higher order systems. And so here I pose to you pretty much the first order uh, analog problem, right? Y prime is equal to AY plus G of T. And then the problems that you're going to be solving in this section are going to look like X prime is equal to matrix AX plus some uh, vector function G of T. So, let's try to solve the left-hand side first, because that's something that we know how to do. And so, I believe you could solve this with uh, the knowledge from my, what was it, third, fourth video? Probably third. Yeah, probably third. Okay. This is nothing but a first-order linear equation, right? So, what do you do? You move the a y on the other side so it becomes like this right and then remember what you need to find you have to find your q t your integrating factor which is just as follows integral a dt right and then this is really just e to the minus a t Great. Multiply on both sides. This will become e to the minus a t times y. If you take the product rule of the derivative or derivative of this product rule, uh, you'll get exactly that. And remember, you have to multiply it on the other side as well. Don't forget that. This is a good review, actually. If you have a, if you're trying to review for the final, um, kind of tying just everything together, we'll we'll get you there for sure. Uh, and then from here, it's just begging for it to be integrated, right? So you integrate that. I'm going to run out of space. So let me make myself, give myself some more space. And what you'll get is uh, derivative integral in this class. They go away. So E minus ATY is equal to, because this is for a general G of T, uh, I'm just going to keep it. But I want to make a disclaimer. Assume you already took this integral. So if you already took this integral, that means you have some plus c, right? And then from here, in order to solve for y explicitly, you just divide by that, right? So this becomes integral e minus a t g of t uh, dt, right? Divided by e minus a t plus c e a t. Cool. Now, what did we say last video? We have this new powerful tool, e to the t a. So there's no reason why we can't just do this. So saving all the steps, you can you can perfectly do this with as a as a first order kind of thing. You could easily rewrite this as x prime minus a x is equal to g of t, right? And then carry on the steps. Uh, you know, skipping and finding trying to draw from here like okay what is that to that um, this is what it is it's literally just x of t instead of writing the e to the t a on the bottom I'm gonna write it on the top so this is e to the t a times integral of e to the minus t a times g of t dt right plus c now, at this point, you have C1 and C2, so it's like a C vector. C times E to the TA. And th that's what it is. That's all you have to do. And then, uh, for completeness, there's another formula as well, which is given to you right here. And this one just involves the fundamental matrix solution. And so, depending on the scenario, you'll find that one of these is easier to use in certain scenarios while the other one might be hard and vice versa. Um, you can see here that 
the advantages is for the E the TA version, you know, you might ask, okay, how do I find E the minus TA? Do I have to invert the matrix? No, absolutely not. All you have to do is you just change the parameter. Wherever you see T, now just plug in minus T, and that is your E to the minus TA. So if for some reason the matrix is very hard to take the inverse of, use the E to the TA version. Uh, if not, then more than likely the bottom version is what you're going to try to go for. And so let's just sum this all back up and do this last problem right here. And so this is how they're going to be posed to, right? This is of the form x prime is equal to ax plus g of t. And so you just go from here. Now, you might be asking, like, okay, how do I take the integral of, like, a matrix multiplied onto another matrix? It's simple. When you take the integral of a matrix, you just do element by element integration. And I'll show you what that means um, if it scares you a little bit. And just to recap, uh, this is just variation of parameters, right? Hopefully that's caught on by now. But this is, again, essentially the longest problem you kind of have to do here, depending on your professor. And uh, except now we're just doing variation of parameters for higher order systems. So let's deal with the uh, A matrix by itself. So we have this 1, 4, 1, minus 2. Uh, you know the deal. Find determinant A minus lambda I. I'm going to go ahead and just give you what these x1 is, the eigenpairs are. x1 of t is uh, E to the minus 3t times 1 minus 4. And then x2 of t is equal to e to the 2t, 1, 1. Okay. So, skip some steps there. Feel free to do this on your own time. Um, we've just done it so much that, you know, I want to get to the good stuff. Then, fundamental matrix solution is just the first column is x1. So, this is e minus 3t minus 4 e minus 3t again. That 4 is terrible because it keeps connecting on the top. Uh, and then second column is E 2T, E 2T. Okay, good. So, from here, we want to find the inverse. Okay, and since we're not evaluating at 0, we just we have to go directly and try to find the inverse of this. And so this is where you uh, now attempt this. And so it's really, it's the same thing, right? You find 1 over the determinant. So first and fourth element minus the 2 and 3 element. So this becomes e minus t, right? Plus 4 e minus t. And then switch the first and fourth. So that's e to t. Let me make sure you guys know what I'm doing here. This is inverse of this. e to t and then e minus 3 t. This becomes minus e to t, and this becomes 4. God, there we go again with the 4. 4 e minus 3 t. That is, wow. Okay, hopefully that's good. Um, and then from there, uh, you want to clean it up a little bit. And so, really, this x inverse of t now becomes one fifth e to the three t minus one fifth e to the three t four fifths e minus two t one fifth e minus two t. Okay, cool. So, again, looking back up to this formula, we have x1, uh, the inverse of x at t. The next operation that we have to do is multiply that onto g of t, right, inside the integral. So, let's go ahead and do that. And so, remember, this, this whole thing, uh, let's just go back to this real quick. You just basically work from inside out, right? I'm going to take this x negative 1 of t, multiply by g of t, then I'm going to integrate it, and then I'm going to multiply it by x of t again. And that's my particular part to uh, this variation of parameters problem. Great. So now uh, I'm going to write this out in steps so it's pretty clear. x1 of t, g of t is going to equal to this matrix, right? I'm just going to write this multiplied onto 
what was our g of t, which was e minus 2t minus 2e to the t. And then once you do this matrix multiplication, you will get the following. You'll get that this is 1 fifth e to the t plus 2 fifths e to the 4t, 4 fifths e to the minus 4t, minus 2 fifths e to the minus t. Cool. And now the next step is to integrate this, right? So you integrate this, which now brings you to this step of x minus 1 of t, g of t, dt. And again, as I said, it's just term by term integration. So let's put this in the same viewing window. Don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay. So this is really just going to be, if we take the integral of 1 fifth e to the t, it's just going to be 1 fifth e to the t, right? Integral of 2 fifths e to the 4t, that's going to be 4 times 2 fifths e to the 4t. Or, oh, excuse me, no, we're, we're taking integrals, not derivatives. Wow, that was, that was bad. Uh, plus 2 over 5 over 4. So 2 over 5 times 4, which is 2 over 20, which is 1 tenth. Right, okay, good. 1 tenth e to the 4t. Same thing down here. This is going to become minus 1 fifth e to the minus 4t, and then this is going to become plus 2 fifths e to the minus t. So we've now taken the integral of it, and then the next step from there is to multiply all of that by, again, the fundamental matrix solution. So this step here is this x of t multiplied onto x inverse of t g of t dt. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's fine. Um, and so remember our x of t is what's right here and then this whole mass is this matrix here. So x of t again was, and remember to keep it constant so don't move around the columns otherwise you will get the wrong answer. Uh, minus 4 e minus 3 t e 2 t and then e 2 t multiplied by that top matrix again. I'll write it down. It's fine. 1 fifth e t plus 1 tenth e to the 4 t uh, minus 1 fifth e minus 4 t plus 2 fifths e minus t. Cool. You do this mu matrix multiplication, so again, this is tedious just because matrix multiplication can be tricky. And you get down to this seemingly, uh, I don't know actually, like, I don't, I don't know what you guys' take is on it. Like, this is very clean and nice looking. I personally prefer this, even though, like, you know, this was a whole mess to get through, like, all of this. But I like the final answer to be clean. I would rather prefer this over, uh, you know, like, seven terms uh, in one element, right? But I don't know. I don't know what you guys' take is on it. But anyway, digress. So x of t, again, written by the, the formula up here, right, is the fundamental matrix times your constant vector plus that uh, little part that we got down to, which was just all of this, right? So therefore, your final answer can be written as, I think I need a little bit more space, yeah. You can write in many ways. Um, either way is fine, though. You can write fundamental matrix solution is first, right? So E minus 3T, or really doesn't matter because it's all being added anyway. E minus 3T, E 2T, E 2T. Now, you can write this as C1, C2, or you could just write a C with a vector sign on top. Either way, it's fine. Plus, that's a, that's a plus. Um, e t over 2, 
and then minus e minus 2t. And that should be good. Uh, again, this part right here is what you're used to when we solve the uh, just in general homogeneous linear systems. And so if you wanted to keep the notation the same as what you're used to, you can write this as c1e minus 3t times the eigenvector 1 minus 4 and then plus c2 e 2t times 1 1 and then you can add the particular part in and either way it's good perfectly valid answers great all right and so to finish chapter six off we're going to do defective matrices and then from there we're going to move into nonlinear stuff so stay tuned for that